Hey, it's Darius Clark of I-75. And if you know me, it's probably from CPA Review. But did you know that I-75 now offers EA Review? All three parts of the Enrolled Agent Exam. You can get a three-part bundle or separate parts. And the best part is we now offer a scholarship to not only the CPA Review, but also the EA Review. So when you click on Frequently Asked Questions and then the scholarship page, scroll down and click on Enrolled Agent Exam if that's the one that you want to apply for. Apply today and you can win a scholarship to all three parts of the Enrolled Agent Exam or whatever part you need. Just go to CPAExamTutoring.com. And now let's look at today's video. And I hear this question all the time. Hey Darius, how important are S-Corps in the Enrolled Agent Exam and the CPA Reg Exam? Well, S-Corps, you're going to have to know something about it, especially basis of a stockholder in an S-Corp. So let's try some multiple choice questions together about S-Corp basis. These questions are right out of the I-75 test bank, which means you probably haven't seen these questions before. So this question wants to know what is Cindy's basis at the end of the current year. Cindy owns all the stock in Juniper Corp and S Corp and Juniper Corp had an ordinary income of 100,000 for the current year. And the following data is available for the current year ended December 31st. So there's her beginning basis, 4,000. She got a cash distribution of 25,000. Tax exempt interest was earned by Juniper Corp and the corporation had a long-term capital loss. So what's her basis at the end of the year? And the answer is 73,000, which is choice A. So we start with the beginning basis of 4,000, add the ordinary income, we're up to 104, add the tax exempt interest. Even though it's not taxable, all items of income will increase basis. So we're up to 107. Then the distribution is subtracted, 25,000, and there's enough basis left to deduct the loss of 9,000 and still have a remaining basis of 73,000. Letter A is correct. Luke is a shareholder of Tailgate Studios, an S corporation. Luke's share of the S corp loss in year 11 is 40,000. And his basis in his stock on December 31st, year 11 is 15,000 prior to that loss. He has loaned the S corp 9,000 during the year, which has not been repaid. What amount of loss can Luke deduct on his year 11 tax return? Well, it says his basis is 15,000 prior to the loss and that he loaned 9,000 to the S Corp. That brings his basis up to 24,000. So then Luke can deduct 24,000 or choice D on his year 11 tax return. And that's because the loss deduction is limited to basis. So out of the $40,000 loss, that's his share this year. He can deduct 24,000, the other 16,000 carries forward until there's sufficient basis in either debt or stock. So the answer is D. On January 1st, year 21, Jill purchased 50% of the outstanding shares of Peters and S Corp for $2,000. At year end, Peters Corp had 5,000 in ordinary income, made 1,200 in charitable contributions, and paid personal expenses for Jill in the amount of 400. What is Jill's basis in Peters Corp at the end of year 21? And the answer is 3,500, letter A. Basis of an S Corp shareholder increases for ordinary income and separately stated items of income or gain. Basis of an S Corp shareholder can be decreased for non-deductible non-capital expenditures, such as charitable contributions and personal expenses paid by the S Corp on behalf of the shareholder. Therefore, charitable contributions and personal expenses must be subtracted from basis. So Jill's beginning basis of $2,000 plus half of the ordinary income, add 2,500, minus 600 of charitable contributions, half of the 1,200, minus 400 of non-deductible expenses paid on Jill's behalf. Notice we don't have to take 50% of that because they told us all 400 were paid on Jill's behalf. And that brings us to 3,500, Jill's ending basis, choice A. And this is exactly the kind of S-Corp basis question 
you better be ready for. Renko is a shareholder in Hillcorp, an S corporation. Renko's basis in Hillcorp stock would be increased for which of the following? A says loan made to Hillcorp by Renko. Yes, that would increase Renko's basis in the stock because Renko has more at risk. By loaning money to the corporation, Renko's at risk for that money if the corporation never pays them back. So that would be a basis increase for Renko. How about letter B? Loan made to Hillcorp by a bank that Renko co-signs and is personally liable for, that will not increase Renko's basis. Wouldn't reduce it. Basis would not change for Renko, even though the loan was made to the corporation, but this time it was made by a bank, a third party. It wasn't made by Renko. Even though Renko co-signs and is personally liable for the loan, do not give a basis increase to an S Corp shareholder for something like that. There are exceptions though. If the shareholder Renko makes payments on that loan, then the shareholder basis would increase. Also, if the shareholder is the primary signer on the note and the corporation is the secondary or co-signer, then the basis would increase. But the general rule is no basis increase for the S-Corp shareholder, even if the shareholder is personally liable for the bank loan as a co-signer. So this question, the answer is A, and they can easily ask you one like this. And don't forget to apply for an I-75 scholarship. Click either CPA exam or enrolled agent exam. Just go to cpaexamtutoring.com and click on frequently asked questions and then click the scholarship. Scroll down and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.